Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to today's Beginner Circle uh, webinar. Uh, I am Zach Manis, and I'll be your host this evening. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions pertaining to different sites or services or things that are covered in the normal the market pinball wizard or market section of uh, EWT in general. Any requests that are specific to individual stocks or sectors that are covered in stock waves or crypto or things like that that are covered in other services should be reserved for those services, but we'll cover most of the normal things that we cover in markets. Um, so um, we are still trying to get confirmation of the bottom of a fourth wave and the start to the fifth, which for the S&P should be still inside the intermediate degree wave three of our primary wave five that started back here in March of 2020. The NASDAQ, which we'll look at in a minute, does more easily count as a one, two, one, two start and this is all of the intermediate degree wave three, actually closer to the November high for the NASDAQ. Um, and so a larger parentheses wave four is trying to complete. Um, we did have some good indications that the lower low that we got in February um, was very good for the S&P. Um, and we're tracking a potential five up forming for wave one of this wave five and had, despite the almost um, you know, near 100% retrace in the Mar on March 15th in the S&P and the lower low that the NASDAQ did get, the S&P held that as a possible wave one or wave two um, in a start to the, the wave one that we wanted to see in, in the, the fifth. So we know that we need to see five waves up and three waves down to have a high probability change of trend that our correction is over and we got one two in the top of what counted best at the time as a third and needed a consolidation as wave three um, i'm going to zoom in now to this tab and we'll talk about the potential for getting a lower low under that february low for an alt slightly deeper or even larger degree wave four. Um, but let's kind of backtrack a little bit and look at um, what is currently still valid um, off of that low, but really what we wanted to see hold as you know a, a wave one. This looked like a good five waves up despite the deeper retrace that was brought on by the lower low that NASDAQ held. Um, this looked good as a parentheses wave two. We had five waves up into um, almost a 1618 FIB extension between the 1618, 1382 and the 1618, which is pretty normal Fibonacci extension for a third. Um, but we needed to see a fourth wave hold in the 4450 region. And so we got an A, B, C move down into April 6th or April 7th. Um, that looked really good as that potential parentheses wave four, but we couldn't hold that low and get a move up as the fifth wave targeting the 4720 to 4740 region for one, two, three, four, and a fifth wave up, and then getting our wave two consolidation. So dropping under that, maybe here allowed the nominally lower low here under April 6th and April 7th allowed for um, and uh, an overlapping fourth wave, even though this was five waves up and this was five waves up, um, we could still count this as a fourth, although unorthodox, um, as the fourth of a leading diagonal, but it became less reliable. Um, so especially when it dropped a little bit deeper down here and we had a possible five wave move down, um, but that could have counted with the lower low here as an A, B, and a C wave down for this wave one and wave two. And we had a really good reversal off of the April 8th, off of April 18th, um, but that was holding a nice consolidation um, as a possible five wave move up and a three wave retrace at the end of the day on April 21st, last Thursday. Um, but when I was out on Friday for Passover, it broke that low and proceeded to continue to extend a lot lower um, and then stretched even lower um, yesterday um, into the, the low that we have here. 
But despite that lower low, we can still potentially count a larger A, B, and C, with this low being an expanded flat for that B wave um, that has not yet broken the February low. So far deeper than reliable as a wave one and a wave two, we still have to consider that that is valid as an ABC up for wave one of an ending diagonal and a deep ABC retrace for wave two. Um, so we are very close to invalidating that, but it hasn't invalidated yet. So we do still have to respect that even though we've dropped under all of our normal Fibonacci support region, which we say for a wave two under most circumstances, our ideal zone extends from our 382 to our 50% to our 618 retrace with the 7644 being a valid fib but less reliable than holding into this ideal target box. Um, so we're way under all of that, but we haven't actually invalidated. So there is the potential that if we are going to invalidate, um, that that invalidation can be part of a larger A, B, and C wave down um, off of the January high where this ABC up, instead of being the wave one of an ending diagonal for the fifth, is just the B wave in a larger fourth. Um, the issue with that is that um, it, it, we're, we're not filling out the most normal proportions um, as an alt A, B, and a C wave. Um, this seems a little bit more muted as one, two, and a third down, to really get to the normal uh, measured move that we would see. Um, let me go ahead and add that here. The measured move that we would see for a, a C wave, whether it is still at this degree or whether it's one degree higher in the parentheses wave four. Um, we can see if we put our fib tool here, our 100% fib is down here at 3950. Uh, with the 38.2, uh, 123.6 being at uh, 38.11, um, and that also having uh, those two being straddling the 50% retrace of the third wave up. Um, but the structure here being so convoluted and messy, really going all the way back to the November high, um, which is what a lot of things that Garrett and I look at in terms of individual sectors, individual stock names, um, the equal weighted averages, um, and the NYSE, a lot of those in the NASDAQ itself all count um, a better high for the wave three in November and count the high that they made in either December or January as a B wave, um, a corrective high within this larger correction. So with all of, of that, um, I think it's important to consider the potential that even if we do break the 4114 level, I don't know if that's necessarily an automatic extension all the way down to 3950. I would not bet the farm on, on that, and I would instead continue to look for good individual setups and diversify, keep some cash on hand to make some purchase, certainly hedge um, if need be, but don't abandon ship for everything and flip 100% leveraged bearish um, on a nominal break of you know the previous low when there are a lot of other charts that we're going to look at um, that that can be arguing more strongly for whatever convoluted consolidation this is that isn't a regular ABC you know that ended here um, still being closer to complete. Uh, so that's what I want to look at. Uh, first, I wanted to, to zoom out on the structure um, that we should see um, if, in fact, we're going to fill out as that ending diagonal. Um, ideal fibs, you know, we came close to our 1236 fib that's in the blue here for the third of this three. So ideal Fibonacci pinball means we should get closer to the 1618 but a smaller wave one and a deep wave two of an ending diagonal, um, normal fib extension for the diagonal should really look something more like this, um, which would really only get us to about the 1382, which is not what we normally see when we have a third wave that gets closer to the 123.6% fib. 
Uh, so maybe somewhere in the zone uh, still between the 5130 and the 5625 region for that third, uh, I mean, for that, that larger intermediate degree wave three for the fifth of the third. Um, and maybe we get a little bit more normal um, FIB extensions uh, if we are going to hold here as that wave two. Um, and again, because it's it would be a diagonal, if we're going to hold this low, then we would be looking for an ABC move up for the third, a deeper fourth wave that could overlap with the top of this wave one, and then an ABC move up for the fifth wave. Um, if we do make a nominal new low, whether we stretch all the way down towards 39.50 or whether it's just a quick break in some other less more complex pattern and then an immediate reversal um, as a new low for wave four, but some other WXY or other pattern um, that bottoms nominally under the February low, then we could restart this move as a normal impulse and get more normal proportions. Um, and that might take us back up towards the 5625, which is that 1618 FIB extension. Uh, but we can't rely on that, but it's certainly something to be on the lookout for. Um, I want to move on to the NASDAQ first before we look at any of the equal weight versions. Um, and actually, I want to take a look first at SMH. And I shared this in the room, uh, main room on uh, EWT. Uh, this is something that Garrett and I have been following in Stockwaves. We are a little bit uncomfortable with this as an alt. You know, this looked pretty good as a possible wave four, even though it was a little bit on the shallow side. It was a 38.2% retrace for parentheses wave four. Um, we had a decent move off of that had a corrective retrace, tried to get something more bullish started here in February, but couldn't hold that low. So that put us on alert for breaking this low, which we did in February, got a strong reversal off of that, but couldn't hold any clear corrective retrace from this low, and then drifted lower into the March 15th low that the NASDAQ did make, um, different than the S&P. Um, that me concerned that it looked a little bit like five waves down at that point. So I was looking for at least a B wave bounce, um, but I really wanted to see more of a B wave if this was five waves down almost to, you know, below the, the 382, then would like a bigger B wave and then a wider flat if they we're still holding a fourth wave. What it looks like now is that this bullish move that we got off of that March 15th low, instead of being the start of wave five or the start of a larger B wave, um, even though it looked like a good five waves up, started off as a corrective retrace, couldn't hold that ideal consolidation into the beginning of April, and then only got a small three wave move up and then dropped lower and continued to show more weakness from there had a few other opportunities to maybe hold support, but really couldn't get anything clearly bullish off of that. And the continued weakness is now filling out as five waves down, um, where it looks like this was our was still our A wave. We had an expanded flat for the B wave. So this very impulsive looking move from the lower low on March 15th was the B wave of the B wave in an expanded flat. And now we have five waves down, filling out a pretty proportionate. We're in between the 764 and the 100%. And we have the 50% retrace of the fourth wave, just a little bit lower. So maybe get one more final capitulation spike, which could stop at 221, um, but could easily head down closer to 215. It's not needed. Um, certainly have enough things that are trying to put in bottoms that we don't need to, to be so you know, such sticklers for that one more low, uh, but we don't have any clear one to start to a new wave one yet either. Um, but I am looking for some nice symmetry here with a nice inverse head and shoulders to form. So getting five waves up and then a corrective retrace um, looking very nice like an inverse head and shoulders to complete that move. So when we take this into consideration and some of the other tech charts and then go over to the NASDAQ and see how that is played out here, you know, we had our ideal consolidation here into January. We couldn't get five waves up. We couldn't hold a corrective retrace. We broke that again, and then we extended lower into the February low. Then we did get stretched nominally lower again into the March 15th low. Um, it was possible that this was all of a, an awkward 
you know, W, X, Y, or a different A, B, and C wave into here, or just one, two, three, four, and an awkward five waves down. For all of the fourth wave, we were holding a 382 retrace, and we got this very, very bullish move off of that in the NASDAQ. Um, but when we are looking for this to hold either high consolidation as a fourth and get a better fifth wave up, or at least hold as a wave two, um, it couldn't establish and, and get anything going off of those ideal, what was a corrective move down into support, but couldn't get anything going, then got an extension, then couldn't get anything going, then got another low, and this could count as a bigger A, B, C, but then couldn't hold on to anything clearly bullish off of that, and then dropped a whole lot lower. Um, but now, if we look at this in light of what we're looking at on, on SMH, on the semiconductors, then we can count this as more of a WX, where this is that expanded flat, maybe even going all the way back to here, and then it gives it even more proportions for this Y wave, and an A, B, C move down, or maybe this is going to fill out more as five waves down, closer to the 12200 region. Um, but as an ABC for a Y wave, we are at, did hit a 100% extension, um, still trying to hold this 382 retrace region for the fourth wave. So long story short, this doesn't give us a reliable structure like we had into here for saying we should really be on the lookout for a clear bullish move to form, but we do are still looking very corrective and into that support region. So being on the lookout for something to form five waves up and three waves down as a smaller one, two in the start of what could be a new wave one of five forming um, would be um, prudent. So when we look, when we zoom out at the NASDAQ, two things are, are, are important. Um, we can certainly count, you know, one, the NASDAQ is further ahead, um, at least further ahead in that, it is already the larger fourth, the parentheses wave four of primary wave five, but also that it could even, you could even squeeze in all of the subwaves for this to be all of the primary wave five. And this could be maybe five waves down as an A wave to start this A wave, or maybe even just this A wave automatically in the, the larger cycle degree wave four. Um, but that said, we do have the potential in the NASDAQ different than the S&P for a larger cycle four and cycle five, whereas the S&P looks like this is more coming into that this fifth wave that we're looking at in the S&P completes you know, a, a bigger move off of 2009, which is not the case in the NASDAQ. Um, all right, let's jump over and look at the um, IW or the, the YM, which is the Dow, uh, because like the NASDAQ that we talked about is running ahead and is already clearly at least the larger degree wave four um, and, and maybe even complete with all of the primary wave five if it can't hold soon. Um, we have the, the Dow, um, still looks like it needs to get higher for just the third of the parentheses wave three um, inside that move uh, off of the March 2020 low. Um, so the NASDAQ, I'm saying that um, its primary wave five could potentially be complete but that that primary wave five on the NASDAQ is only a cycle degree wave three. So we could get a bigger ABC that holds here, but it wouldn't be the start of a multi-decades bear market. Um, it, it would just be a larger fourth and then setting up for an even larger cycle degree wave five heading much higher. Um, so ideally we're gonna hold here as a fourth wave and get a fifth wave up and then we get the cycle four. Um, but there's the, the NASDAQ does not look as longer term bearish yet um, as the S&P potentially can in the completion of its five waves up off of 2009 because the NASDAQ has this larger cycle wave one and cycle wave two off of the 2002 low.
So we need to balance that equation. Um, all right, Robert says, at what price on the S&P chart, if we reach, does it imply the fifth wave up to 5,500 is no longer valid? Okay, so that's a good segue from what we're talking about here on, sorry, the autocomplete in uh, motive wave is a little bit overzealous sometimes. Uh, so even if we consider this, first of all, usually we, we have a clear five waves up here and we only got to a one, two, three, six extension. So it, it we really did not get high enough, even just in the, the third, the print as a parentheses third for normal fib extension. Um, but even if we were going to count this as the parentheses wave three, we would really need to get, uh, I would say, under 3,500, 3,550 um, to, to really say this can't be just the, the parentheses wave four and we still head up to one more high towards that 5,500 region. Um, there's, there's too many charts that don't count well as complete. Now, if they don't hold soon, then you can continue to get worse feedback loops where these drag on these and these drag on this index. And that's one of the, you know, I think when we do a finally top in our bull market, I think a lot of the, you know, carnage that we expect in the bear market is going to be caused by all of the ballooned ETFs that are all holders of all of the same names that are all in all of the other ETFs. And so, you know, you kind of have, um, you know, this ETF that holds a bunch of spy, which is really made up that that's overweight in all of these things. And, you know, that, that there's, there's a lot of magnification uh, of a lot of the same things going on in the market. And I think that when we do have our actual bear market contraction, that's where a lot of it could come from. Um, but I don't see that being the case yet. Um, I think we we have not reached the extremes of uh, euphoria, uh, of excitement and exuberance that I think we would be really indicative of a major market top. Uh, we're not there yet. Uh, so going back to YM, YM did actually make a higher high which if this is the same count as everything else in a diagonal where this is an A, B, C up for wave one, and I use blue a lot to as a color coding to denote a diagonal potential, it's not always being used as an alternate, um, but that's what that little blue wave one note is where this is an A, B, and a C wave down for wave two in, um, in, those, other, in those other things. Um, in the, the YM, it, it's possible to count this as the fifth wave up of our wave one, and this drop is wave two that has hit a 764 retrace, um, and so far holding that and not as close to being in danger of breaking the February low uh, for the Dow. So um, those are some of your oftentimes your your market leaders, a little bit of weakness in the Dow today from Boeing, um, but a lot of other things looking very good. Um, the earnest that 300 percent is the is measured off of the primary degree wave two. So in, in when we go when we're looking at FIB extensions, um, you know, we have very, very, you know, our third wave was very, very extended. Um, let me go back to the sentiment stages. So our, not our third wave, if we count it as the orthodox manner that, that Garrett and I prefer, where September 2018 was the top of, of primary wave three, that's at a 176.4% extension. So our, our normal FIB extension for a third is the 1382 with the 1618 being more aggressive. This went one FIB beyond that to touch the 1764. But not only did the primary wave three get all the way to the 176.4 FIB extension, we have a hugely expanded flat for the B wave 
um, with a higher high that touched the 200% FIB extension. Um, and then holding our, our C wave of wave four nominally under the, um, the, the 1382 um, as a return to that. Um, it, it is it very, very foreseeable um, and not at all abnormal that we're gonna get close to um, that 300% FIB extension based on the subwave FIBs that we're, that we're tracking uh, for the um, subwaves inside that primary wave five. Uh, Carla asks, with S SMH, you showed that it continued to morph, it extended lower and lower, so the only way to know for sure that a bottomless place is a proper one too. Uh, yes, uh, until, especially, I mean, sometimes if you have the cleanest three waves down for an A wave, three wave bounce for a um, B wave, and then a clear five waves down, completing perfect Fibonacci pinball internally, and exactly to a C equals A Fib extension, which is exactly at your 382 retrace for a fourth, then you can have a, a much higher probability that that's all of your fourth wave and you're gonna get your wave one and wave two to start from there. But even then, if it's at a minor degree or an intermediate degree, and certainly if it's at a primary degree, um, you know, Gare and I are gonna be, you know, are gonna wait to see that confirmation um, off of the low as well. Um, and, you know, even, even if it looks really, really good, um, with all of the internal structure, you still want to see some smaller degree confirmation um, of a turn because things can extend. Um, Russell it does just does not look very good. Um, I think for sure it is in the larger um, intermediate degree wave four. Um, I think it's probably better to just shift it to um, an, a, a diagonal where this is maybe wave one and wave two, and this is an A, B, C up for the third, and this is a very, very large wave four. Um, maybe even the entire larger degree structure would be counted better as a diagonal off of uh, 2000, or actually we have to go back in the Russell similar to the NASDAQ, it goes back to that 2002 low. Um, and perhaps this does count better now as a diagonal, where this is an A, B, C up for wave one. And this was all of a cycle degree wave three. Uh, I would say that it, okay, so if that was all of the cycle degree wave four, then maybe this counts better at this point as um, an A wave, well, we'll probably count it at the top here, and this can be trying to complete a larger B wave. That's the most bullish I can get at the moment on, uh, on the Russell maybe this is still working on the cycle wave three um, as a less clear, maybe this is A, and this is an expanded flat for the B wave, and this is one, two, three, four, and a fifth wave up um, for this cycle wave three here. Um, but uh, it, it, it doesn't have a lot of, of clarity as a fourth wave anymore unless it's the fourth wave of a diagonal maybe for the c wave up here um, which doesn't quite fit with uh with everything else um so i'm waiting for some clear structure off the low uh, i was trying to give this the benefit of the doubt of maybe getting an abc up for that fifth wave i knew that we only had abc up here um, and we're looking for a retrace. We got an ABC retrace to a 618 um, as this possible B wave, but it couldn't hold. Um, so leaky lower broke that low. So we can go ahead and delete that. So now we're just looking, maybe this is an A, B, and now one, two, three, four, and five waves down trying to complete for that. And go ahead and get rid of the impulse because it's definitely not that impulse. Um, so,
I don't know if it's this primary way for, but this is how I would count it now in that diagonal, if it is the same primary wave five, but zooming out, I'm, I'm starting to lean more to some other larger diagonal structure. This is gonna yell at me because it's not overlapping with wave one, so we'll tell it to ignore that. And then we'll just give this a larger ABC and five waves down. but not clearly complete yet. And that's a very, very extended C wave. Um, but now if we're looking at fibs for the larger degree fourth wave, we have 1805, 1825 to 1805 is the next confluence of support on the Russell. Uh, all right, moving on to the equal weight versions, and then we'll take a look at some of the commodities and uh, gold uh, GDX and such. Um, pretty much the same as what we were looking at on the S&P. Um, much deeper than ideal. We held where we wanted to as a possible fourth, but couldn't get a fifth wave up. So now it looks like a much deeper ABC as a possible one, two of a diagonal, or we're going to nominally break this low and just be some sort of alt. Um, I would probably count it as, as an A, as a WXY as well, um, off of this high. So that alternate count that we had looked at before, where this is one, two, three, four, and five for the third, for the fifth of the third, and then a WXY um, off of that. But you do have to worry about this instead of being an ABC that just tries to complete nominally lower, that it tries to fill out one, two, three, four, and five down um, for the normal five wave C wave in that alternate count there. Um, and then QQBW uh, is going to interestingly allow for the same, um, actually, more bullish potential um, than the diagonal that we're looking at in the S&P and the RSP, um, but we could force the same purple count that we were looking at on SMH as some sort of awkward um, WXY um, if it's going to break that nominal lower low, but it is very interesting that this is holding up better as that possible five waves up. Very, very deep retrace under all of our reliable support but it has not invalidated um, as an impulsive start to the possible fifth wave. Um, so I haven't actually looked at that in a few days. That's very interesting. Um, this would get much lower for the wave one and the wave two, and this would be looking a lot lower for the three and the four. This would now be targeting maybe about there, um, but still, set up for attempts at a fifth wave at a higher high. Um, all right, let's see what other questions I might have missed. Uh, Uh, for a 9,500, I mean, that would be, so if, if we have started that larger degree, so I have this cycle degree wave four down here in the 10,000 to 9,500 region, um, maybe holding closer, just above 10,000. Um, if that's the case, this could easily be the A wave completing, and we'd get a B wave bounce, um, back up to the same 15,500 region, plus or minus, um, as the resistance, and then come down. Um, and that 
you know, this was kind of a sharper drop. So after that bigger bounce, you know, maybe this chops down sideways for a number of months um, or the better part of a year um, in order to, and, and still holds closer to that uh, 10,000 level. You know, anywhere inside of this fourth wave is a very valid um, region of support. If we are starting that larger degree um, cycle wave four already, I, I don't think that's the case. There are too many charts that, that don't just don't fit with that, um, that do not look anywhere near complete with their upside move off of the January to, or the March 2020 lows. Um, I mean, the, the, the NASDAQ is going to have um, more, I mean, just overall higher beta compared to the S&P and certainly compared to the, the RSP, um, the, the equal weight uh, S&P. Um, so in terms of like which is stronger, you know, one can have stronger setup because it, it doesn't have as wild swings. And so the, the structure might look a little bit more in line with, with the Dow. Um, and so it gives you a little bit, it smooths out some of those sharp edges. Um, but if you're looking for, you know, something that's going to move more, you know, then, then those higher beta things are going to move more both to the upside and to the downside. Um, all right, let's move on and talk quickly about oil. And, uh, and then we'll, and natural gas, and then we'll jump in and talk about uh, the metals and then a few other things uh, if we have time. So this still haven't broken the low that we hit in March 15th that was um, possibly enough to be all of the fourth wave. Um, I think this might be filling out. Um, I mean, it could be a triangle where this is A, B, C, this is D, this is E, and sometimes triangles can even go F, G, and even H and I, and just continue to come into a tiny point, and then they shoot up out of that. Um, it, it doesn't have the, the most reliable structure in terms of a triangle, um, and a one, two, one, two is technically still valid. So whether it's a triangle or it's a one, two, one, two start, um, I think this is kind of your your bullish lower trend line at the moment. And any break of this line um, easily gets lower in this fourth wave. So if it's a triangle, it should continue to hold that. And then this is going to be your top line of resistance right here. And so once you get over that top line of resistance, then you could be breaking out in a fifth wave. Um, what I will say is that a lot of the individual energy names, certainly XOP and XLE that we follow in stock waves, um, in their equivalent versions of this third and fourth, a lot of them look more like they only just topped in that third here, and that this is an A, and that they're working on a B wave, and they need a C wave down to complete their fourth. Um, so, uh, oil doesn't quite line up exactly with the energy um, stocks, um, but uh, you know they they're all filling out this larger diagonal that we've been tracking. That I keep it color coded in purple just to show the similarity between all of those structures um, that are in the related sector, um, and so that's filling out nicely. Now moving on to natural gas. I have to the only way I can pull up my natural gas chart is going into the advanced search to pull it up here because the uh, um, autocomplete is really awful when it comes to that. So natural gas, I've been tracking this larger diagonal structure. Let me zoom out one level here, the 12 hour. Um, this larger diagonal structure blue for a diagonal. So we had a clear ABC move up off of the 2020 low. Um, so that was not reliably the start of anything long term bullish. Um, but there was potential that this was a slight lower low for this larger degree B wave. And maybe this was the start of the diagonal for the larger degree C wave. Uh, we did hold a wide running flat for a wave two, it was a little bit shallower than we would normally expect for a wave two to end um, of a diagonal. 
Um, but the fact that it was wide and a running flat with clear A, B, C structure made this a high probability uh, setup for me to head higher in the third of what should be an ABC move up for that larger third. Um, so that did fill out. Uh, we got to between the 100% and 1236 extensions um, with good subwave structure for all of that ABC up for uh, wave three, and then filled out a wave four as an ABC down to a 618 retrace. So that gave us another high probability setup for an ABC move up in the fifth wave, um, looking for um, an ABC up in minor degree for parentheses wave five, likely trying to head towards that top trend line. So far, we got a nice ABC move off of that. We got a very deep retrace, but held to 764. And then we're looking like a nice 1212 in the start of a C wave, and that exploded higher very, very nicely. Um, then we got to a 2618 extension um, that really looked more like all of the, the circle wave three. So initially, we didn't have a lot of clear um, retraces in here. So could have still counted this as the parentheses three inside circle wave three. Um, but because we hit that 2618 extension, I decided to start looking for the larger um, circle four. Uh, we got an ABC move down, hit a 382, and a new moved up really nicely off of that in what looks like wave one of the fifth. So I think we're pretty close to completing a major top. One thing that I do know is that a lot of times the final move in commodities like, um, particularly like silver and oil and, and natural gas, can be get blow off top type moves. So we have our top trend line up here that is actually running through the tens at the moment. Um, we also have a subwave structure that can take us up into the high nines. Um, we have a 200% extension at 959 for that larger cycle or primary degree C wave. Um, and certainly potential for it to skyrocket through that a little bit. Just be very careful and don't get greedy. Um, if you do find yourself holding on to some natural gas related position um, in that kind of extended blow off top type, you know, vertical move, that those moves are not usually able to sustain their angle of attack for very long. And once they stall, they drop very, very fast. So if you have been long from the support that we we're looking at here, or you're getting long from the support for the smaller degree wave two, um, or you're scalping again after taking some nice profits from the three and we're holding a fourth, then I would certainly be trimming and raising your stops along the way um, so that you don't get caught being a bag holder, you know, even if it looks like it's spiking towards 11 and people start panicking because Putin's doing this and, you know, it's, it's the middle of the summer and people need natural gas to run the heat in their houses or whatever fundamental argument you want to make. Um, just don't, uh, don't get greedy. All right, let's move on to gold. Uh, gold had potential to hold the bottom here as the uh, parentheses wave four. It was tracking very similar to oil for a little while and could still be, although it's in a larger degree. Um, only got three waves up, although that could have been the purple A wave of this A wave. Um, but again, we got an ABC retrace into ideal support, um, but couldn't hold and get anything going off of that. So the, the move down looks more like the start of the C wave, and now it looks like we're filling out, needing a fourth and a fifth to complete, ideally holding the 1860s, but there is confluence for a 100% extension for the C wave with the 618 FIB um, a little bit lower in the 1820 region. Uh, Veer asks a question on labeling. Uh, do you generally use numbers for five-wave impulse moves and letters for three-wave corrective rate? Yes. Um, the conventional nomenclature for Elliott wave uses a one through five structure for a motive wave that is a um, not necessarily an impulse, but a motive wave is a move that advances the structure. Um, and then an ABC pattern for a corrective wave. 
Um, there are some exceptions. Diagonals um, can sometimes have um, their motive waves within the diagonals can be ABCs, but generally you're, you're looking at um, that kind of um, naming structure and you have different degrees um, that uh, will follow. And so inside this would be at a minor degree where you have regular Arabic numeral one, one through five, no parentheses, no circles, and capital um, letter um, ABC. Um, again, no um, parentheses, no circles. And then inside a minor degree, you can have a um, minute degree. And a minute degree is a lowercase Roman numeral one through five with a circle around it. Um, look to Mike G and Jason and Garrett and myself um, and any of the analysts that are using Motive Wave for proper nomenclature. The analysts that use TradeStation or um, any other platform where you have to use the text tool to make their their subwaves or their their wave labels um, are not often going to be able to quit adequately follow um, correct degree nomenclature because um, you can't type a circle around a wave one very easily um, and there's no programming that forces you to conform um, to uh, the correct degree. So with this, with motive wave, if I increase the degree of this structure, one, two, three, four, five, and make that instead of minor degree, if I take it up to intermediate degree, then it automatically adjusts the subwave structure inside that third to a minor degree and one degree larger. Um, and it's going to do it with the proper accepted Elliott wave nomenclature as well um, for the appropriate degree. So um, little plug for motive wave. I think it is very, very helpful uh, for helping keep you organized with things like that. Uh, all right, so let's look at silver because silver definitely looks a little bit different than gold. the gold chart. Um, silver made lower lows uh, than the fourth wave. Um, multiple times and and really doesn't count at all the same way as gold but off of this december low uh, we can have an abc structure up for a possible wave one of a diagonal um, maybe the diagonal is a c wave that kind of fits in line with um the uh with with the some of the minors and so far we're holding an a b c into a 100 percent extension for the c wave just under the 618 above the 764 as a possible wave two of this diagonal. Um, so very similar, smaller degree, um, but similar to the structure that we were looking at just now in uh, natural gas going back to, you know, a, a number uh, almost a year or so ago um, where it looked like a, it was a clear ABC up but holding a nice flat into support as a wave two and setting up for an ABC move up uh, towards the 31 to 32s uh, as the third of that diagonal. Uh, all right, let's take a look at GDX. Uh, GDX looks very different. Uh, I'm going to move out to my larger degree chart here. Um, very different from gold, uh, very, very different. Well, actually not so different from silver. Um, this can still count as the primary degree wave two on March 2020 low, uh, but the structure we got up couldn't hold as a fourth wave. So it looks more like this was an intermediate A and an intermediate B wave. And now we're starting our intermediate C um, in the third of a much larger diagonal. Now, because we're looking at a C wave here, so we know C waves can either be diagonals themselves or impulses. So if this C wave is an impulse, then we can count one, two, even though we got near 100% retrace uh, for this wave two, but we can count five waves up for wave one into that resistance, that little crisscross of the Fibonacci fans that we were looking at as 
likely resistance uh, in the 41s for our wave one. Um, so we can either count this as an A, B, C up or one, two, three, four, five up. But either way, we have a sharp drop um, to a 50% retrace so far that really looks like this should still be only the A wave of a wider flat for wave two. Um, but because we're already at a 50% retrace here, we do want to see a pretty high bounce as the B wave so that we can hold closer to the 618 retrace um, as that wider flat. Um, there are some things where this counts better as maybe all of the wave one here and an A, B, C wave of an expanded flat. Um, there's a few wave setups that one we added today, um, a few more that we're looking to add in the metals, miners, and agriculture service um, for some of those individual names. Uh, I do think that it's worthwhile to at least scalp for this B wave because of the potential for it to turn into more, or at least if it is just a B wave, um, it should be getting closer to the 39 region again um, as a, a more uh, as a wider flat structure for that wave too. Um, so, you know, hard to um, you know look at this harsh straight line move down and and get immediately bullish. Um, especially with not much off the low, but I do think that this is a small enough degree um, that you can put, you know, do a scalp setup here with a tight stop, you know, just under the, the 34 or 3375 region um, and play for a pretty decent bounce. Um, I think I've showed you guys the TXGM. This is kind of like the RSP for GDX. Um, it includes more names than the GDX, and it, it tries to get, it's nowhere near an equal weight just because so many mining stocks are so, such small market cap. There's, there's no index that's able to take an adequate size position um, to, you know, to have like an equal weight for a lot of those names to make an index. Um, and if you did even try to make an index, which Garrett and I tried to do, um, some of those, their representation, you know, was so small, um, it, it just, it, it was not an effective index. So, but this does a pretty good job of including more like 50 to 70 different mining stocks. A lot of them are Canadian and Australian names um, and uh, not as heavily weighted to some of the same, you know, six to 10 names, the GDX or the Huey are. Um, this very clearly looks like five waves up more inclined to count it as the same B wave, even though it held um, more reasonable support as the fourth. Um, the B wave, the, the size of this is wave one and wave two, is too large really to reliably be part of one, two of the fifth. Um, I just haven't snapped it to my B wave yet, um, but looks more like this should be a one, two of the, of the blue B. Um, but we do have a clear five waves up, and a sharp drop is wave one, not quite to the 50%, but pretty close there. And again, should be due for a high B wave um, of a wider flat to hold the 618, ideally. Um, all right, I have a couple minutes. There was a request to look at the 10 year. Um, let's go here. I'm going to zoom out to a two week structure um, because we did not hold any of our bullish setup. Um, off of the retrace where we thought this was all of our cycle wave four and this was an A and we were holding a deep B wave and trying to start a C wave up for the cycle wave five. And instead it looks more like we are probably going to break um, the October, September, October, September 2018 low in this expanded um, complex uh, combination uh, structure for an alt wider cycle degree fourth wave. So now we're going to zoom in on that. Um, and again, we're, we're probably, I mean, could count this as a, um, as a diagonal maybe, but I think it's probably better just to say this is one, two, doing the sub waves. This is probably one, two here. And this is three, four, and five, and maybe even this is just the third of the third, but hopefully it wouldn't need to get that much lower for that. Yeah, we'll get 
for that on the fifth or the third. So it could bounce a little bit more in this fourth wave and maybe make only a nominally lower low for that third and then bounce a little bit more in this fourth and then make another lower low to complete that C wave. Um, C wave is already at a 200% extension, so that's not as helpful. Let's put fibs on here for the Y wave and see what we get. Let's get rid of that ratio and get rid of that ratio and get rid of that ratio. And that gives us, yeah, I think coming down closer here, we're at a one, two, three, six, but I think probably getting a little bit more of that fourth and fifth and then another fourth and fifth closer to 116 seems a little bit more likely um, before we put in a more significant bottom. Um, you will need to be careful um, to consider, you know, even that a move, even if it gets past this resistance as a fourth, this could have been a B wave and this is one, two, three, you get a high bounce as a fourth wave of an ending diagonal and then a fifth wave down as a C wave at this point. Um, but uh, very, very oversold and uh, but can continue to leak lower first. Uh, Roku, we can talk about tomorrow in the Stockwaves webinar. Chuck, um, let's see, let's move on. So the um, US, which is the 30 year, uh, I think is, is very similar. It already can count a little bit more like five waves down trying to complete in its C wave of this wider flat. It has not actually broken the low from October, 2018. Um, there is a little bit more of a risk here of this having been all of the cycle wave five um, and that this is five waves down off of that high. Uh, but should still be due for a bounce, at least coming back up towards the, the 170 region, even if this is five waves down from this major top. Um, but I would rather see this get another ABC up towards the 220s. Um, all right, maybe we can take a quick look at the dollar. I haven't looked at that in a while. Um, not holding as a B wave. For sure, that's, I think we've gave that B wave as much, oops, I want to get rid of all of that. Just wanted to get rid of the B wave. And maybe this. Um, I am not sure what the dollar's doing. Um, it looked good as five waves down from a potentially major top. Have not quite exceeded that top yet. This does not look like it's a sustainable angle of attack, um, but has missed every opportunity to try and turn down from normal resistance and continue to extend higher. So um, this isn't a clear five waves up, uh, but after five waves down, it should have really turned down here or here. And this is another extension there. Um, I would not bet on that continuing, but I'm certainly not going to look for, you know, anything until I see a clear smaller five down and three back up. Uh, oh, EEM. EEM, very much like the um, main index charts, uh, very, very deep retrace if this is still a one, two, but it has not invalidated. Um, this was an aggressive sell-off that was ideally just the extended fifth of our C wave of B. We didn't quite get to a 618 retrace. Um, so possible that this was a different, this was one, two, like we have here, but this was just the third, and this was a fourth, and this is a fifth wave down, trying to get to 3870. It doesn't look as pretty. Um, it would be much better if this holds, um, but we need to see a clear, um, smaller one, two start to trust that this third is starting. Um, with such a deep retrace under support um, because any break of 4090 um, easily breaks 4050 and a break of 4050 easily drops down to 3870s uh, on the s p here let's go to the es so for the smaller degree um, Again, this low hasn't broken, so the ES can easily count. Um, 
as the same, let me go to our, my nano counts here, um, the same blue wave one and wave two, trying to hold. I think it's pretty important that it holds this 4135 low. If 4135 breaks, then it is far more likely that 410175 is going to break. And if 410175 breaks, then we have to allow for at least possible extension in some other alternate wave four that can continue to leak lower. Um, there are ways to count um, more similar to what we talked about on SMH or maybe on the NASDAQ where this is a an awkward X, you know, WX and then an ABC completing for a Y wave, trying to hold the same, you know, 4,100 region plus or minus, you know, 30 to 50 points, um, but not dropping all the way down to the 39.50 or 39.30s. Um, but we can't necessarily rely on that if, especially if these lows, you know, that February low does break until we have a new clear five up, three down off of that low to start the fifth again, or at least to start with a new wave one of this fifth. Um, so your normal proportions, if we're going to get a new impulsive start from a nominal lower low, would look like this. If we're heading, you know, again, we said we came very close to the one, two, three, six extension for this three. So the one, six, one, eight is our ideal fib for the five of three. A one, two of an ending diagonal doesn't get us all the way here with normal fib extension, but a new start to five up, you know, could. And so if this is our normal uh, proportions for the subwaves inside a new wave five starting, then the normal proportions inside that wave one would look something like this. So if we were to drop nominally lower and invalidate the, the blue one, two, then we'd be looking for at least a small five waves up and three waves down about this size to be proportionate and, and to have a high probability of being the smaller parentheses one, two of a new wave one of wave five. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and end there. That was just over an hour and I'll get it uploaded and converted for you guys uh, to review at your leisure. Have a great evening.